Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavallo, the 176th District in Monroe County. Today my guest is Kelly Marie Haitian, and she's written a book, The Word of Mouth Guide to the Poconos. And uh, it's very interesting, uh, Kelly, because right on the front, you have Paradise Valley Road and Devil's Hole. And then think of that intersection. <laughs> <laughs> it started off as an eight-page magazine that uh -huh. I distributed to my coworkers at mm -hmm. ShopRite. Mm -hmm. And there was a copy left in the break room, so I knew a lot of people were reading it. Mm -hmm. And they recommended that I write a book, and they had a lot of questions and a lot more information about the people that visited the Poconos and things that I didn't know that I tried to research. Yeah. But uh, you, you talk about specifically in the book, um, for example, in the beginning, the, the, the walking purchase, what, what, what is that about? Well, the walking purchase happened, it was... Um, William Penn and... Uh, well, William Penn's son, actually. Mm -hmm. William Penn had good relationships with the Native Americans, mm -hmm. but his son thought that the European settlers deserved more land, mm -hmm. so they reached an agreement with the Lenny Lenape that they were going to have settlers walk in a certain direction mm -hmm. in one day and then that would be the land that the European settlers got. Mm -hmm. But when they drew the lines, they said that they kind of drew it more in a circular way. Uh -huh. So the Native Americans didn't feel that it was fair. I see. And then it's interesting that there were four forts here in Monroe, right? Yes. It was at the command of Benjamin Franklin to build the forts. Then you talk about the Pocono Mountain House and, and Springs, located in Cuba Township. A large hotel, three separate cottages and stables, early 1900s. Well, this used to be a vacation area. They had a lot of big hotels. And in Cuba, they had another section that mm -hmm. kind of burned down. Mm -hmm. You have a couple in here, very interesting ones. The Montonesca. The Montonesca was, was built in the early 1900s. And as you're, come, as you're going down 611, just below the railroad bridge, up on the right-hand side, up on the hill, was the Montanesco Hotel. Yeah. The Montanesco Hotel, back in, in the early, when it first opened, to have electric light in a, in a, in a, in a hotel was like, wow. It, it also had an elevator. But one of the things that they were able to do in, in there is have running water. What they, they had a unique way from the stream to siphon the water up to a, to a level higher than the building, and then would, it, it, would, it would come back down, it would be constant, constant flow. But everything that was consumed in that hotel, because in the old days the hotels were from Memorial Day to Labor Day, was, ha had, uh, was uh, consumed, consumed there, was either grown or, or was on that property. They didn't have anything delivered, it, everything was there. So it's, 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 an, it's an amazing story, quite, yeah. a, quite a hotel. Then you, you have one in here, the Kittatinny. Do you know where the Kittatinny stood? The Kittatinny stood right at the Delaware Water Gap, where the uh, toll plaza is. Yeah. And there's a train station down below. People would come from New York by train. They'd get off the train, and there's a big stairwell going all the way up. To, to the Kittatinny. Imagine what kind of views that in the old days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you're right. The, tremend, our, uh, the, the area had a tremendous amount of hotels. In Mount Pocono, the uh, Mount Pleasant House was when it first was built, and then it became Pocono Haven. And then later on, um, it had another name, and it, it, it burnt. The, the, most of these hotels all burnt down. Yeah, they and did. It's a shame. But uh, the, the history was just unbelievable. And that, that hotel I talked about uh, actually stood right there where the Burger King is. And then you mention in here, you talk about businesses, I see. The International Boiler Works that was, you know, down on, on page 42. And then they talk about a camp, the, the abandoned camps. Big camps. You'd come up here for the summer and you'd stay here all summer long, right? The yeah. Birchwood Resort, Skywood. Well, I actually grew up right down the road from the Birchwood Resort. Uh -huh. So when my brother and I used to go walking, we'd always walk past it. Uh -huh. And now I walked past it with my friend Diane, who lives down there. And, like, the water wheel is now broken. And the interesting thing is my cousin went back there because he lost something. Mm -hmm. And the pool's still full with water. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. And that's Let's dangerous. Have a picture up here. Yes, it is. That's dangerous. You know, they sh some they should fill the property, and uh, you know they should fill that that pool. Um, you also talk about haunted places, Buck Hill Inn. I know that there was something there. They were on um, MTV's show Fear. Uh huh. And they went in there, but they got criticized by the Pocono Record because they said that a lot of the stories on the show never happened. How did you get his interested in the history, by the way? Well, I've always been a writer, but until I started reading Weird New Jersey, I never thought about writing mm -hmm. nonfiction. Mm -hmm. But growing up near Birchwood Resort mm -hmm. and seeing all the sites change, I decided that I wanted to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. What makes our area so fascinating? I think it's how it's evolved. Like, they used to have these huge luxury hotels, the Kittatinny and the Water Gap House. And then once they burned down, they had Mount Airy, the Stricklands, Pocono Gardens. It's always been a vacation area, and celebrities used to stay here. It took some time to put this together, and I, and I applaud you. I, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice, easy read, and, and uh, I wish you well with it. Um, Thank you. It's the word of mouth guide to the Poconos. Now, if somebody was interested in buying your book, how, would, how could they get it? Well, right now they could buy it from Amazon or mm -hmm. Barnes & Noble's website. Mm -hmm. And if you go into Barnes & Noble, you can actually order it there mm -hmm. and they can get you a copy. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for uh, coming down. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate having the time to discuss your book. And I wish you the very best. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate much. that. Legislative Report will return in a moment. that Violet Oakley was the first female artist to receive a large commission for artwork done in a United States Capitol building? In 1902, Joseph Houston, designer and architect for the third Harrisburg Capitol building, commissioned Violet Oakley to paint murals for the governor's reception room. He believed that Oakley's contribution would add interest to the building and act as an encouragement of women of the state. Prior to beginning her work for the Capitol, Oakley set out to England to conduct research for her murals. Upon return, she decided to center her artwork on William Penn and the founding of Pennsylvania. Oakley made sure that Penn's ideals of justice and peace could be seen throughout her work. In 1906, she completed 13 murals titled The Founding of the State of Liberty Spiritual and was placed in sequential order around the governor's reception room. These murals were some of the first to be installed in the Capitol. When Edwin Austin Abbey, another artist for the Capitol, died in 1911, Oakley was offered another opportunity to create murals for the unfinished Senate and Supreme Court chambers. Her work on the Senate murals, including International Understanding, was completed by 1919. Oakley then completed the Supreme Court murals, including the Divine Law, by 1927. Oakley is said to be the principal artist for the Capitol, with a total of 43 murals on display. She remains one of the greatest muralists in the United States. Now you know. Welcome back. We just finished talking to a local author, and we have another local author here, Patricia Grego, and she's known as Patty the Poet. Patty, you have two, uh, two books. Let's talk about one. Which is the first one, The Heartfelt Poetry? Patty's Heartfelt Poetry. Let's that actually started for me, Mario, back in 2008. Mm -hmm. I was going through a lot of heartaches and struggles, mm -hmm. and I started writing my feelings down on paper. Mm -hmm. And before I knew it, a poem was born, and that's how it began. And I was talking to friends and family, and they said, maybe you should publish that, Pat. And I just said, well, okay. Um, I kept that in the back of my mind. And I said, uh, okay, I'll, I'll look into it. So I have a publisher. So my publisher, I did publish it. I sent everything to them, and they published the book for me. And that was done in 2009. Daydreaming. Today I'm dreaming of a place where there is no noise, no rushing or worrying to start any day. Just the waves hitting the shore as the warm sand touches my feet and the sun beats down, I'm filled with happiness. This is from my first book. Okay. Okay. And uh, this actually, when I, before I actually started this, I, I skipped a, a part a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is called Missing You. I, wrote, I won the Editor's Choice Award um, with, I entered a contest in New York, mm -hmm. and I won the Editor's Choice Award for this poem, and it's called Missing You. 
tonight as night falls, I miss your touch, wishing you were here and loving you so much. It hurts me that you are so far away. Still, I know you hold the key to my heart every day. No matter what the day brings, your love will keep me strong and give me wings so I may face another day until you are home to stay. And that's the one I won, and that's what actually started with me with everything writing mm -hmm. with. And another one, um, a lot of people can relate to this, is called Troubled Waters. It seems no matter what we do, bad news we hear. With everyone struggling, these days are filled with fear. With each day, more problems arise, and we are filled with despair, not knowing if we will survive or if anyone really cares. So it's a couple of them. Would you like another one? Yeah, give me one more. They're, oh, they're absolutely right. beautiful. Okay, thank you. Tranquility, I like this one. This actually came to me. I write all my poems very quickly, and I start with the title. This one's called Tranquility. It was the peacefulness of the rain that made me start this poem. It was on a Saturday morning, and mm -hmm. the trickling of the rain hitting the window mm -hmm. pane, mm -hmm. and it's... The peacefulness of the day brings a calming to my nerves as the week has been trying, for I have dodged many curves. It's so nice to hear the rain as all my worries lift and the solitude I feel is like a precious gift. Very nice. I couldn't have read it that well. Because <laughs> you know what? You feel it. Oh, yes. Very passionate you know what I'm about my writing. Yeah, yes. You feel it and you're able to show that in, in, you know, in my yes. gosh. Uh -huh. so, so what got you started in writing? What made you? I, you know, I, I never, I never wrote a poem before 2008. Yeah. I've written over 3,000 poems, and um, I've, I've actually started on a couple more books now. I've written a children's book and another poem book. Mm -hmm. It's not published yet, but soon mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. So, so you'll have, you'll have a third then coming up then. Yes, yes. And we have a, the, um, the second book the, there. The second book, Patty's Poems of Inspiration. Now, how that started was um, I, I've written for many charity, uh, charity uh, events mm -hmm. and fundraisers and uh, people that I know. I also do uh, personalized poems for people. Mm -hmm. Anyone looking for a personalized poem um, can contact me. And um, I, I've written many. I've written about 500 personalized poems, and I've written 3,000 poems now in you, total. Yeah, you, so did... When you were um, with uh, Representative Brown, you did a show with her, I believe? Yes, with the Red Cross. And, and was it, did you do a poem for the Red Cross? Or? I did, actually, and a, a very, very nice, a, a large poem, 11 by 14. Mm -hmm. Rosemary interviewed me on that, and uh, it is now hanging in the Red Cross office in Strasburg. Wow. On their wall. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I write for a lot of establishments. Now, beginning with this one, Mario, here, the second mm -hmm. book, Patty's Poems of Inspiration, I designed both the covers, like I was telling you earlier, and um, this came to me with, everybody says, Patty, is that you? And I said, no, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just a person, like, looking into the, the, the sunrise, uh -huh, you know? Uh -huh. And I liked it, like, because I had wallpaper done. Uh -huh. And I, on the back of the book that I did, I love water. Uh -huh. I love the sunsets and the sunrises. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, the front of my book is, is um, more, excuse me, is morning, like a sunrise. Mm -hmm. And the second one is like a sunset. So it's, the front of the book is daylight, and the back of the book is nighttime. Same thing with the first book. Daylight, nighttime. Nice. That's my niche when, you know, when yeah, I do books yeah, and when I yeah, design books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I put a little saying here, a little hope goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And uh, people seem to like that. I met a lot of cancer patients mm -hmm. and uh, different heartfelt stories um, through people. And that's where these poems came from. And I'd like to read one to you now, if I may. Uh -huh. um, I met this beautiful girl, Ellen. I was at the Tannersville Inn uh, for the fundraiser for uh, breast cancer. And her name was Ellen. And I'm just going to get it. It's in the back here. And you, and you wrote it for um, her? I wrote it for her, and I gave it to her. I did, I did a beautiful poem for her, mm -hmm. and I called it. She had these big blue eyes. She came to me after the presentation, after they were doing the fundraiser, and I was there um, just, just you know, as mm -hmm. a spectator. And uh, she says to me, um, I, I've heard of you before. You know, I guess she heard me a couple times. I've been on the radio a mm -hmm. couple times, so she heard me on the radio. And uh, that night I went home, and I wrote this poem for her. It's called The Fire in Her Eyes. This woman came over to me and started to speak about her struggle with cancer and how it made her weak. But you would never know by looking into her eyes of blue that she was sick at all, for she knew. Her attitude would bring change and she would inspire all that she met because of her desire to be all she could be to those who were stricken by telling her story to anyone who would listen. For this disease that causes heartaches, she will beat with every step she takes. Her name is Ellen, with love that fills an ocean, as the world will see her undying devotion. Wow. Wow. She was very touched by that. Wow. 
I took her out to Friendly's for breakfast that day, and believe it or not, I had a crowd gather around as um, she started to read the poem. And wow. uh, yeah, so it, it, was, it was very moving, was very moving. Also, I have many friends in Strasbourg establishments that asked me to write for them. And um, I wrote this one actually for um, Main Street Jukebox. Mm -hmm. And it's come right in to our store where we, where we have CDs and so much more. As you browse and walk around, you will see paintings from local artists in our town. For we have music of every kind, both old and new to soothe your mind. So please stop in and pick your choice here at our place where you have a voice. Tom has that on, on his wall. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I saw one there for Grandpa Pete's as well, the bagel place. Oh, let's see. Right there. Oh, there it is, yes. You can smell the bagels as you walk to the door, and the aroma of the coffee will have you begging for more. You will meet our friendly staff as your order is placed. You'll soon be on your way with no time to waste. For your morning lift, come to Grandpa Pete's, where the food is great down on Main Street. <laughs> Do you like that? <laughs> yeah. A lot of my stuff rhymes. A lot of it rhymes. Um, this was funny. I was um, working one day and looking out the window, and it was stop dead traffic. And I called it. I, I wrote this poem uh, on my lunch hour that day. It's called Traffic Woes. Today is one of those days when you look out as the traffic and people are all about. For repairs are everywhere, slowing everyone down as they try to get through to the next part of town. Oh, we must keep patient and carefully travel, for if we don't, we will unravel. So hitting the gas and then stepping on the brake gets us frustrated, so we need to take our time and relax. And don't get upset, for in time you will arrive if you don't let. Your emotions carry you away, and you will be able to say, I didn't let the traffic ruin my day. <laughs> it was very nice. Was that Do you when like they that? were doing the bump outside yes. the Stroudsburg? <laughs> Yeah, because they were doing, they were working on every corner there, and to oh, get through Main goodness. Street was tough. It, it was. Yeah, no, that was appropriate. Wasn't that cute? <laughs> yeah. That's cute. So I can write a poem about pretty much anything. Oh my God. This one's called Drift Away. This has to do with a little um, baby. Uh -huh. And I call it Drift Away. Close your eyes, little one, and I will sing a lullaby as you drift to sleep so you don't have to cry. For in your dreams, birds will fly high and lollipops will float as a rainbow fills the sky. And when you awake, I will be here, so you will see there is no need to fear. For your smiles bring me joy, and I am so happy that you're my little boy. Beautiful work. Thank you. You know, it's, it's amazing I'm, uh, you know, how many local artists we have here. Um, you know, authors, uh, painters, uh, you name it. Uh, in Fielder, inven there. Inventors. Inventors. Inventors, correct, yes. You know, uh -huh. The Poconos are filled with them, and yes. it's just amazing that this is a way that I, you know, get the opportunity to showcase some of those famous folks that people just, you know, they're here and they're famous in the community, but people don't know outside the community. So we get the opportunity to uh, to showcase you, and um, absolutely I appreciate uh, that. great great work, and um, I, I wish you the very best, and hopefully the the, the books do very well. Thank you very much. So it's Patty's Heartfelt Poetry and Poems of Inspiration. That's correct. And they're available on Amazon. Amazon. And they okay. can check my website out, too. It's pattythepoet.net. Pattythepoet.net. Patty with a Y. With a Y. <laughs> Legislative report will return in a moment. Did you know that the chamber of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives contains a painting depicting the 24 hours of the day? Located in the center of the ceiling, the mural titled The Hours was created by artist Edwin Austin Abbey. This wonderful masterpiece charts the setting of the sun, moon, and the many stars that grace the heavens. 24 maidens, who each represent an hour of the day, begin each day in light and gladness and ends in solemn drapery carried on still shoulders. Now you know. Many times in, in my uh, uh, times here in, in Harrisburg, I always tend to um, pretty much celebrate 
the local artists that we have in our community, local authors. And what an opportunity I have here today to really meet with two local authors. Um, and one is Karen Elise Warmack, and her book is The Adventures of Prissy and Missy, A Sleepwalk Affair. And the other is Patrick Malcolm and uh, The Limit. And is, is when you say stop. I'm going to start with you because, I, I, Patrick, I, I looked at your book and very motivational. Am I correct? Yes, sir, it is. This title, like you said, is The Limit is When You Say Stop helps you to understand that every choice you make in life, you are in charge of that choice. And the moment you decide to make that choice, you already accept the consequences. It's not the color of your skin. It's not your race. It's not your neighborhood. It's not your mother, your father. It's you. The choice that you make, you have to live with it. Impressive. Really impressive. Karen? Yes. A pleasure to have you. I know we've been trying to get this together for a while. I've looked at your book and for kids and to see it. I'd love to see it in all the libraries within Monroe County. Tell us about your book and what inspired you to write the book. Well, absolutely. Well, Representative Scavello, first I'd like to thank you for having me here. And it's just a privilege and an honor. Thank well, you. Thank you. For allowing me to share The Adventures of Prissy and Missy, Sleepwalk Affair. Mm -hmm. This is my first title in a series of 10 wow. exciting stories written for girls and boys all over the world. World of various ages. Prissy and Missy are multicultural cat twins and their lives are filled with love, curiosity, day-to-day -day adventurous experiences, problem solving, and forgiveness. And every book is written in exciting poetic verse with original hand-drawn illustrations. And another feature that parents, guardians, teachers, librarians really love about this work is that there's a glossary in the back. Mm -hmm. There's a glossary in every Prissy and Missy adventure. And this is the first title that we've published. Wow. Open up, let's open it up and just show a couple of the, uh, first the, the, um, the owner who belongs to, but let's, let's look at a couple of the pages. And there you go. Okay. Prissy and Missy were the best of friends. Prissy and Missy were a set of twins. They were two of the sweetest sisters who got along ever since the day they were born. I, that's, that's what we should be teaching kids. You know what I'm saying? It's, I yes. think you're really, uh, you really, you hit it right there. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Now, if I wanted to, to, to get a hold of this book and buy this book, where could we find it? Well, we have an exciting website. Mm -hmm. It's www prissyandmissy.com mm -hmm. where our our listeners could purchase the book. Mm -hmm. They can also listen to seven of the stories spoken word because they're ten completed stories. Mm -hmm. This is the first that has been published. Oh. We are working on also the next book. So many of our readers are anticipating the second title which is The Adventures of Prissy and Missy Travel Abroad. That's really exciting. And there are seven of the stories uploaded online, but the work can also be found at Amazon.com, and we're working on distributorship through Barnes & Nobles, Ingram, etc. out of, uh, we'll be working with Atlas Books, Bookmasters, and they're going to be sh distributing the work for us this coming fall. It's really exciting. Wow. I was going to ask you, what were the challenges of getting involved with the publishing, but I think you've got it together. What, uh. what, 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 how, what challenges did you go through? Representative Scavella, I really had to give myself an education in publishing. Yeah. This work is not self-published, mm -hmm. but I did create an independent book publishing company, mm -hmm. which is House of the Gilded Scribe, LLC. Mm -hmm. And with House of the Gilded Scribe being an independent publisher, we own 100% of the rights to everything, which right. includes the ISBN number, very important for a quote-unquote real book to have, as well as the stunning artwork and naturally the story. Mm -hmm. So so in giving myself an education, it's been really wonderful. I've met so many people and I have overcome many challenges via the internet, learning and growing. Wow. I, you know, so protecting yourself, I guess, with the, the, your publishing thing, this could, this could end up in TV. Who knows, right? That you could, I, I, I envision maybe a cartoon or, or something like that because it's educational for kids. I'm excited to hear that you, a series of how many more are we going to have another? Nine, nine more are following. So They're completed. Ten, ten books. Gosh, beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Patrick, yes. let's go back to you because uh, what inspired you first to write this? And, and if you don't mind, explain that because I, I see here so many, uh, you've written some uh, reflections here that honestly, it's an education in itself. 
Thank you, President uh, Scavallo. See, I was born in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and my father died when I was four months old. When I was age five, I realized that I was like, you know, I was the child that nobody really wanted. I knew it at age five. And I just couldn't wait until I was at a good, you know, age like, say, 12, 13, before I could start working. Mm -hmm. However, I started working at 10. At age 10, I had a full-time job working in a brick oven bakery, okay, in Jamaica. And my job was basically, t as soon as the uh, platters came down with the baked bread, I would flip them over, scrape them, mm -hmm. and dip the brush into the grease, put more grease on it, pass it down so they could put fresh dough fresh on it. Mm -hmm. And I would make $25 per week. Yes. And with that in mind, I started from a very early age realizing that even though you come from a, a bad situation, the things that I learned at that time that I thought was bad, actually when I got older and I start realizing certain things, th those were the training days. That, it's like, those things were my father. Yeah, yeah, that's my father that I never had. So when I came to America and I started high school in America, of course I was a misfit because I never looked like the other kids. I, I never knew about the fashion because coming from my situation, I could not afford you know, the different, you know, Air Jordans, whatever. You're doing pretty good, Patrick. I want <laughs> yeah. you to know right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the limit is when you say stop. <laughs> you know, so, so what happened was, you know, I went through a lot of stuff in high school, but I started getting, you know, the hang of things, like in my uh, junior year. And then I started realizing that a lot of guys that I went to school with, they had all the fancy stuff, you know. They, some of them end up going to jail, while I was in school and I started realizing some of these guys was doing things that weren't right, yeah. you know? And then, you know, gradually things started explaining themselves to me and it's like God, I, I would say God blessed me with the gift of discernment where I could foresee certain things. I could understand certain things because, you, know, you know, I do believe in the scriptures and he tells you that, you know, when your mother or father forsake you, I will pick you up and show you the way. And he did. So I move on from high school, college to becoming an actor. I was on the HBO series Oz for about four years with a recurring wow. role. Yes, you know, that's wow. what I did. I also do stunts for movies. That's mm -hmm. something that I've been doing for over 12, 13 years, mm -hmm. you know. And um, being in the business now with the rich folks and the celebrities and coming from poverty, I start seeing that, wow, it's, it's not much of a difference. The only thing that's different is the fact that some people had a lot of money and a lot of, you know, uh, material items. But... The core of everything is how do you feel about yourself? You know, what are you struggling with? Yeah. And I started to, I've worked on projects where in the process of shooting, the star died. He committed suicide. I was like, wow, you have like these mansions, these cars, this money, this fame. You still kill yourself. Why? Because there was something that was hurting you that no one knew about. But you knew about it and you could not live with it. So yeah. then I wanted to reach out to people. Okay. And... I could not just talk to one person because I feel like, wow, I have so much to say and it's just one person. I said, you know what, let me write a book. Patrick, if I wanted to uh, get, get your book, what would I do? How could I? <clears throat> this book is also available at Amazon.com, mm -hmm. BarnesandNobles.com. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm working with a couple of distributors to get the book out. God bless both of you. The, uh, Karen, uh, The Adventures of Prissy and Missy, Sleepwalk Affair. And uh, Patrick, the, the limit is when you say stop. Yes. Thank you so much, and uh, I wish you the most the very best. And I'd, maybe we could do this again in another year or so and see how, how you're doing and, and following up with yours and, and, and with your book, which, yes. which are other nine titles. That would be My wonderful. Pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. So Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thank you.